but who better than me? Welcome back to yet another episode of the Hardcore Casual with your boy Base the Kid. As always, like and subscribe, share with a friend, a relative, an associate, a colleague, an enemy, and anyone in between. It's all appreciated. There's a lot to go over. So without further ado, let's get into it. So on Monday, it was made official. Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk will rematch for the unified World Heavyweight Championships of the World. So that's the WBO, the IBF, the WBA Super and the IBO belt is on the line as well. Now, I was actually going to do a video initially on Tuesday, but then I saw that there was supposed to be the London press conference. So I was going to wait until after the press conference, but I then kind of found out actually press conferences next Wednesday, not this Wednesday. So kind of threw my, my timetable off a little bit, but they had the Saudi Arabia press conference on Tuesday, which was a decent enough event, had no complaints on it. Um, AJ spoke very matter of factly as we expect him to do these days. He started to allude to, you know, things not being right in the first Ruiz fight, but then said, you know, Usyk was the better man on the night back last September, you know, but they've gone in, he's got a new mindset, he's back to basics, things don't have to be difficult, it's a simple process. He was saying all the things he needs to say. Robert Garcia said his piece. Alex Krasiuk said his. Igas Klamas and Alexander Usyk kind of said his bit as well. But the one thing I noticed about this particular um, press conference when it comes to Usyk in, in particular, because obviously AJ pretty much was the same AJ, but Usyk didn't seem to be very sort of jovial, fun and games like doing odd things to keep his mind sharp he seemed very he looked annoyed it was almost like annoyed that he was there he looked annoyed that this is happening almost like whether it's a case of i would much rather be at home with my family still this war ain't finished like why am i here having to do this obviously he's He's agreed to do it for his country. He's, he made reference to, you know, this his boxing match is important, not just for himself, but it's a lot of people that depending on him and Alex Krasuk made similar um, sort of points. So when you look at it, you've got Anthony Joshua almost fighting for redemption, calling the last thing a blip, in, a blip on the radar. You've got Alexander Usyk basically giving it up as if this is, you know, all or nothing and it's bigger than just me like so I can't fail kind of thing and then you had the stare down now the stare down told me quite a lot because in their previous stare down everything looked you know it looked more like oh we're just doing this because we have to he was in the joker suit everything AJ put out his hand he looked down he shook the hand it was all good on this one they were supposed to turn to the front they didn't turn Eddie Hearn's kind of smiling, okay, this is nice. Then he's asked them to turn again. They don't turn. All of a sudden, that smile's starting to fade just a little bit. So Anthony Joshua, is, it's almost like he's trying to psych Usyk out. But then he, he gestures to Usyk like, okay, like look away, look at the cameras kind of thing. And Usyk's like, mm, okay. But Anthony Joshua hasn't broken gates, but he's changed the narrative at this point. It's gone from the stare down to, okay, like you can look away now kind of thing. So then Usyk starts to turn and Anthony Joshua stays where he is. Almost like, oh, like he's tried, he's tried to punk him. But Usyk literally, as he's turning, his head stays exactly where it is, looking at AJ. And he continues to look at AJ while AJ is looking at, looking at him. And then AJ turns away and he's still looking. And the look in his eyes told me, that this fight doesn't go the distance and that's and i haven't made any prediction on the fight yet we'll we'll keep that to the to the week of um you know after weigh-ins and everything but either Usyk knocks out aj or aj knocks out Usyk. this fight there is no boxing to a 12 round decision on this one i can there's something in the eyes of Usyk that told me i 
do not want to be in there longer than I have to be. Like he said, you know, I, you know, I want to, sh I want everyone to be proud of my boxing. But the last time he said he just wanted to, he wanted to do beautiful boxing. Now he said, I want people to be proud. Now, normally in boxing terms, being proud of someone or or taking pride in it normally ends in a like beating your opponent into submission, so to speak. So I got a feeling that's what's on his mind. Um, I've got nothing to quantify that with at this precise moment, but this, that look that he gave AJ was very similar to the look that he gave Marco Hook after Marco Hook was trying to rile him up from the World Boxing Super Series. And we saw how he handled him in their fight. Now, AJ is a much better fighter than Marco Hook, but I'm just saying there was a very similar I'm not playing any games at this point because that was the same approach and when he goes into that mode he's a lot more dangerous so yeah this one's gonna be real interesting we got it in Jeddah Saudi Arabia and they're calling it what is it a uh, rage on the Red Sea or something like that 85 what was it 85 million dollar site fee or 80 million dollar site fee 65 million pounds split 50 50 between the two of them I mean they're both now set up for life regardless of what happens so yeah this this is going to be interesting but um i'm really looking forward to this fight and yeah it's one of a few big fights that are, have been made or are being spoken about but overall yeah um it was a good it was a good few days of build up i know they've done something um some more uh promotional footage the other day uh, I haven't watched it all, but I know that they obviously squared up in the ring together um, as part of their Saudi thing. So let's kind of see how that how that goes as well. But yeah, this one's going this one's going down. It's going to be interesting. Speaking of big fights, Eddie Hearn recently did an interview. I think it might have been with an American channel. It might have been the Zone, where he said that the. Um, he said that the Triple G and Canelo Trilogy fight is 10 times bigger than the Errol Spence and Terence Crawford fight. And a lot of people have taken issue with that, saying, no, the fight everyone wants to see is Crawford and Spence. Now, I have to actually agree with Eddie in terms of commercial viability and, I guess, general interest because from a casual point of view, both Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin are much, much bigger names than Terence Crawford and Errol Spence. Within the boxing community, you could say it's a toss up in terms of who's more well known or whatnot, but I guess the only metrics you have to quantify any comments you make is pay-per-view sales. So in, Canelo's last pay-per-view on the zone, a platform that had never done pay-per-view before. The overall sum of pay-per-view buyers in the US was quoted to be around 600,000 or a little bit above. About 190,000 off of the zone platform where they had sent it to other broadcasters and I guess 410,000 actually on the zone app. And then that's obviously not to count the total global viewership of who watched the fight and who didn't. So you can clearly see that there, a, there was a huge uptake in that. If you contrast that to um, Terence Crawford's last pay-per-view, it was about, what, 135,000? Errol Spence's last pay-per-view was about 200 and wasn't it like 215,000 something like that 210,000 with uh, you Dennis Ugas it might have been a little bit more but ultimately you say okay you put the two of those combined and they still didn't match Canelo's last ones with a quote-unquote unknown Russian in the US you put him up against Gennady Golovkin that people have seen twice that had two very competitive fights where 
neither guy totally outschooled or dominated the other person and then you say well yeah both of those sold extremely well so there's nothing that would suggest that this current one wouldn't when there was no like, like I said there was no clear conclusive winner um, now in terms of which fight is more anticipated then all day long that's Spence and Crawford within the boxing world at least I mean outside of that casuals didn't anticipate either fight they weren't they weren't clamoring and begging for either one but when it comes down to oh that's on let me watch it it's Canelo and Triple G all day like there's no there's there's nothing that you can argue about that because the metrics and everything tells you otherwise when it comes down to which one's going to be spoke about more from a casual perspective it's going to be Triple G and Canelo from a from a you know a hardcore perspective now it's going to be Spence and Crawford because we haven't seen it yet and we've wanted it for five years but that's not going to translate into pay-per-view sales or where however what other metrics you want to use realistically the best that one would be half a mil like 500k would probably be like the the total amount that you could get from it maybe 550 but triple g canelo like that one's easily a 750 800 k pay-per-view in in the us like guaranteed and like overall subscribership around the world i mean you gotta be looking at at least four million people watching it at minimum you know you go to the kazakhstan's and um i don't know if mexico will have it as a pay-per-view or not i don't know how that's going to work but i overall like there's one there's a one that is clearly much bigger than the other in terms of a commercial presence so i think people kind of need to get out of their feelings when you hear certain comments because it's not saying that either fight is good or bad it's just that one of them commercially is the proven bigger fight and it, that doesn't mean the other one's not good or people aren't clamoring for it it's just they're different leagues it's a bit like champions league and premier league football like whichever like they both get watched but one clearly gets more viewership than the other because maybe one's a bit more localized to one country whereas the other one is global or at least like nas uh, national or international in terms of you know a big european market as opposed to just a british english market as a rough sort of comparison but yeah um no no issues with what was said there like there's no there's no way to discredit it whether it's um whether it's Leonard Ellaby, Ishe Smith, Bob Arum even, like I don't know who whoever else might have something to say about that. But yeah, realistically, like as much as you might not want to hear it, like yeah, Canelo Golovkin 3 is the bigger fight out of the two. And it's not even close. So Lawrence O'Coley went on the boxing voice. Um what day was it? Tuesday? Monday or Tuesday now? Um, Ness asked him, you know, you're with 258 and Eddie Hearn and he's like, yeah, for now. Um, currently is the kind of words. So the question is now being asked to everyone, wait, what does that mean? Like, are you leaving? Is there issues? Like, why would you say things the way you're saying them? Now, on one hand, we could say, okay, well, Eddie Hearn hasn't get, got him the uh, Breeders fight, which is what he wants. He hasn't got him a Gulamarian fight, hasn't got him a Makabu fight. He hasn't been able to get him a unification fight as yet. Whether that's Eddie's fault or not, I'm not sure. Um, he's had a couple of, to him, nothing, you know, defenses, Prasovic, um, and uh, the other Polish guy whose name escapes me at this point in time, but I'll leave a link to it. Um, so yeah, he's, uh, maybe the, I think the next um, opponent was another just random defense. It wasn't another unification. So maybe he's a bit upset with that, or maybe he's with the 258 thing. Uh, it could be, re you know, you've got Richard Riakpour and Anthony Joshua basically sharing the same training team with um, you know Robert Garcia and Angel Fernandez 
So maybe he feels like, you know, AJ's favoring his rival over him, maybe. But then on the flip side, you say, well, hold on a minute. You're with Shane McGuigan and Daniel Dubois, who maybe isn't AJ's direct rivalry now, but he's he's one of AJ's competitors who's called him out and his promoters called out AJ for that fight, saying he's tailor-made for him. So if it is about feeling upset that AJ's with Richard Reactor, well, you're with Daniel Dubois. So that's like pot calling the kettle black. You know, you can't really, that one doesn't really seem, you know, that one don't really seem, seem kosher if that's the reason. Now, if it's about the fights on Matchroom, okay, cool. So who else is, who's gonna get you the fights that you want? Would it be Queensbury? Because they've got no other cruiserweights in their stable, unless maybe Frank has found a decent relationship again with Don King and you get the Makabu fight. Boxer, maybe they, you, I mean, you go to Boxer, well, Gulamarion is being, is being sort of hand selected for Richard Riakpour. So, and Richard's their guy. So you don't, you're not gonna overtake him even though you're the champion, because that's the guy they've been putting money behind and they've been promoting. So it, it's weird as to who you would go with, but it's, I mean, it's also an interesting situation. You know, I guess you just kinda gotta see what the, what the deal is, but there looks like there's trouble in paradise and I'm hoping we can understand a bit more what the problem is. Um, because realistically, I don't see, unless he goes and moves to America, maybe goes to top rank or something like that, I, I don't really see like, any better option for him. And as for 258, I, you know, from what I can see, they seem to do very well for, their, for all of their staff or their, um, you know, their fighters, the people that you know, employ them, so to speak. Um, I don't know. Like I said, there needs to be a lot more kind of into that. I feel like that it was very cryptic in the interview. I didn't I haven't watched the whole thing, so maybe there's a bit more in there that I've missed, or there's some context I haven't quite captured. But that will be interesting to see also. So I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep my ears to the ground on that one. See what I can find out. Okay, so I think I've addressed pretty much everything that's been happening over the week that I'm interested in. Um, look out for basis picks, probably going to take place uh, first thing Saturday morning now because um, the weigh-ins are going to be late on Friday and I'm going to be watching my boy Travis J. Uh, you know, I'm waiting for that comedy special. I know that's going to be a, a good one. So yeah, that video is going to get recorded when I come back. Um, and yeah, look out for maybe another episode of the Hardcore Casual Saturday evening. And then we've got the weekend wrap on Sunday. And from next week, there's going to be a, a Femfiles is going to be back um, and some few other bits and pieces. I'll explain why, it's, why I haven't done one in a little while in the next video. But for now, thank you very much for watching. And as always, Hardcore Casual, out.